Antelo again and here we are back on my drive on quite a chilly day for the next video about the Mark II project here and this week I've had some good news because I finally heard that my cylinder head is now finished and ready to be collected from Roger Upperton over in Leeds and I've been waiting for that since I think April and without the cylinder head of course we can't complete the engine so the engine can't go in the frame so in the next week or so I'll be taking a trip to Leeds go and collect the head now all fully rebuilt new valves new everything fully ported and that can go back on the engine and hopefully we'll have the engine back in the frame within a few weeks anyway and it turns out the delay has been because Roger was waiting for some big valves to arrive from Kipper White over in America and it just wasn't available they just weren't available anywhere so he was waiting and waiting and waiting and in the end I decided that uh, rather than waiting anymore we'll just go for a more standard size set of valves in that head they're actually the same as a late model GPZ 1100 so still pretty big but not as big as we were going for originally and the only real difference that'll make on the bike is I might lose maybe five brake horsepower at the very top end but I'll gain some more power and torque lower down the rev range which for me on this bike which is a road bike is completely fine so we're actually running out of things I can do with the rolling chassis at the moment but there are still quite a few small jobs to do so what I did the other day was I bought a pair of these Oxford bar end bar ends for the bars because obviously I've not got a bar end yet they're made by Oxford you know reasonable make and they're quite small discreet so I was keen to get them on the bike only to find they don't fit they don't fit these handlebars because as it turns out rental bars being aluminium have a thicker wall than a standard steel set of bars and therefore standard bar ends don't fit it's like oh god oh, okay okay so I went back on the internet and I bought another set of bar end indicators sorry bar end bar ends these these are made by RNG the sort of crash protection people and these have some uh, you know some sort of hard plastic ends to hopefully protect your bars if you fall over so we'll get them on the bike today but also something else that arrived today has been my new set of front brake lines and here they are all the way from hell now I just want to use two lines rather than a standard three but it turns out that using two lines is what's called a race type or you know a race option so they do make that option for my bike and of course the front end of my bike is pretty much standard Kawasaki ZRX 1200 so that's what I ordered here they are and hopefully they'll fit on the bike no problem at all because if you remember in the last video I was measuring the lengths of the lines that I might need because I thought you know you can't just buy a standard set to fit my bike but it turns out you can it's just called the race option so we'll get them on the bike as well today and so I've got those hell brake lines on the bike and I must say I'm not too happy with the results they seem a little bit too short I've run this one here just going behind the yokes which I didn't want to do just to make sure it looks okay but on the other side I've got to run this left hand side longer line in a really odd place and it's actually really tight now it's really taut too taut really now obviously when I get the engine on the bike or in the bike that'll drop down the front slightly but it won't be that much maybe only a few millimeters so I think what's happening here is they're both too short by maybe I don't know 15 20 millimeters and I do wonder if that's because perhaps the rental handlebars are a little bit longer wider than the bars fitted to a standard ZRX 1200 I didn't think they were I thought they're pretty damn similar and in fact these are quite a uh, low rise they're not as maybe as high rise as a standard ZRX so buying a kit which is made to fit a standard bike may not have been my best idea this one I can live with that I can reroute it and it'll look okay but this one here there's no way I'm using that it's far too short so I think what I'll have to do is measure this then work out what I really need and order an appropriate length from hell directly 
sort of a win for the RNG bar ends and not such a win for the new brake lines which is a pity because these things are about 60 pounds so one brake line is about 30 pounds the good news is no doubt I can use these brake lines on something else in the future so it's not all doom and gloom unit and so finally for today this thing's just arrived this is the Coso GPS speedo sender nice bit of kit it consists of many two parts you've got this first part here which is the antenna which picks up the signal from space and then you've got this block here which is the signal converter which will convert the GPS signal into a signal that can be read and understood by a speedo only problem is this is designed to work with a Coso Speedo and I don't have a Coso Speedo I've got a Daytona Speedo on the bike but in the blurb for this it did say it comes with a converter wire so it can be used on pretty much any digital Speedo only problem is it doesn't have that wire in it it doesn't have that converter wire so I'm gonna contact the supplier and see whether I've got to pay some more money out to get this little wire or what's going on perhaps it's missing I don't know however I am now thinking that perhaps I should save this for my new project my Kawasaki Z1000A1 project because I just happened to have bought a Coso Speedo Taco unit for that bike which this GPS unit will plug straight into no worries no special wiring required it'll just work which means I won't be using a GPS Speedo on this bike instead I'll revert to what I'm used to which is using a magnetic sender from the front wheel up to up to the speedo used it before I know it works okay I think I've got one of those senders sensors in a box somewhere in the garage so that shouldn't really be a problem I couldn't actually fit it until I've got the brake lines in place because the wire will follow the route of the right hand sorry left hand brake line but as it turns out this left hand brake line is too short anyway so I can't use it so I've sort of gone one step forward and two steps back but that's what happens when you build a one-off bike so I think that's it for today I don't have much time but hopefully by the end of this week we'll have my cylinder head back from Roger Upperton all beautifully ported all new parts in it and then that head can go on the engine and the engine can go back in the frame once I've finished the machine work on the new stainless steel engine mounts and now now here we are another day and another set of brake lines from hell if you recall the first set I tried on the bike were made for a Kawasaki ZRX 1200 which is what I've got on the front end of this bike but they didn't fit they were far too short so I've since ordered a new pair of lines directly from hell and hopefully these will fit okay so we'll get them on the bike in a minute and we'll see hopefully that they'll fit fine but before then, I've got a job to do because this morning I drove over the Pennines all the way to Leeds where I collected my cylinder head for the engine from Roger Upperton. He's done a great job, he's ported and flowed the head, fitted bigger valves, recut the seats and so on. So that head is now ready to go back on the engine and then the engine can go in the frame at last. But first, but first, that cylinder head needs to be powder coated black to match the rest of the engine. So I'm going to take the head in a minute to Camco who are just on the other side of town from me and hopefully they can get the job done in about a week or 10 days. Once that's done I can collect the head, get it over to my friend Les's workshop where he's recuperating from his illness and hopefully in the next few weeks we can get the engine complete and in the bike at last. And here's that cylinder head sat in the back of my car and it doesn't look like much I know but uh, there's been a lot of work and a lot of expense put into this head to get it just right each valve is labelled and etched so yeah these actually I think are one millimetre bigger than standard they're also uh, a bit lighter and yeah much more expensive and of course the the head has been flowed to suit the new Mikuni RS34 carbs that I'm fitting to the bike so yeah this has to now go to cam coat and hopefully I'll get it back in a week or so and so to fit so-called race style brake lines to the bike what you need is one of these this is a double length banjo bolt fitted to the mass cylinder you need that because obviously you've got two lines going from here rather than one and so now I've got those new hell brake lines on the bike if anything actually they're a bit too long rather than being too short but I've just run them rooted them down where I think they look pretty good and 
just to finish things off I think what they need is at least one or two so-called hole separators just to keep them looking nice and neat I don't have any of them right now so I've just ordered a couple and when they arrive we'll get them on the bike and it should keep these hoses looking uh, nice and symmetrical as they should do but yeah overall pretty pretty happy with that and so let's see what's next and so the next job then is to check out if these new stainless steel engine bolts fit the frame just right as it turns out two do but this one here at the back is still a little bit too long so i'll take it back to jeff so he can add a bit more thread i'll cut it back a bit and hopefully it'll fit just right so in the previous video that we made last week i showed you how these were made because we made them for the green z650 but of course we also made some for the mark ii as well because i didn't have any so that's why we made them all at the same time and so once the thread on this particular bolt has been extended slightly and i've cut it back to fit just right i'll get all these bolts welded up on this end because right now it's just a standard uh, hex nut on the end so we'll get them welded on then get them skimmed and hopefully it will look pretty much a wee factory except of course it will be made in stainless steel so that's pretty good now the mark ii also has two shorter engine mounting bolts here low down but that doesn't go all the way through it's actually two shorter bolts that go about maybe four or five inches and that's it so until i get the engine in the bike i can't really tell precisely how long they need to be but we have machined up a pair of similar stainless bolts for that purpose and right now they're probably a bit too long so we'll just have to wait until the engine is in the uh, frame and if we measure things up accurately and get them shortened threaded and welded at the same time so yeah that's okay that's going fine so far and finally one more job for me is to replace this rather large brake dash pot on the master cylinder with this rather smaller dash pot made for the clutch side i've got two small dash pots on the 1170 and i think it looks a lot better than having a small one and a big one it does mean that uh, bleeding the brakes becomes a bit more tedious because obviously this doesn't hold that much fluid but i think it's worthwhile doing so because it just looks such a lot better so yeah that's fine i'll do that soon and in this case of course these are all made by hell same as the mass cylinders and the brake lines and i bought this from the staffordshire classic bike show last week for a grand total of 10 pounds which is quite expensive really but hell did have a stand there so i had a chat with them and uh, yeah i picked up this just to fit on there like that oh and finally for today i've now taken the flowed and rebuilt cylinder head to cam coat on a faster town where it's going to be coated black now i was originally going to have it done in powder coat black but i've since changed my mind and it's now having some high-tech black coating called something like uh td tl or tltd i can't remember which one it is but that's some kind of a thermal coating that helps uh, the heat escape from from the head so they recommended i use that particular coating on the head so i thought yeah why not the price is similar so uh we went for that instead and i think the finish looks quite similar to powder coat so it's not really a big problem so now i've just got to wait about 10 days or two weeks to get the head back then take it over to les's workshop where he can rebuild it and uh, yeah get it on the bike but right now he's still recuperating from his illness so i'm not quite sure when he'll be ready and able to uh, get back his workshop and continue working on his various projects but we'll see we'll see there's no rush and so that's the work done for today i uh, still have a few parts due to arrive this week in the post so when they arrive we can start to do a bit more work on the bike and now it's the next day and a couple of parts have arrived in the post for the bike the first of which is this so-called hose separator here which looks awful um i wanted a black one i couldn't find a black one so I had to go for a colored one so i figured well gold is closest to the handlebars that should do but the gold's a different shade and it looks oh it looks wrong so i'll keep it on there for now but i'm going to buy a black one when i can find one on ebay or amazon or whatever and the second part that's around today is this thing and this is the speed sender for the daytona speedo tackle unit on the bike and so according to the instructions here the sender needs to be mounted 
within one to three millimeters of the bolts which retain the disc to the front wheel. Therefore, as the wheel spins round, the sender will notice, if you like, each bolt passing in front of it due to its being magnetized, and that will send a signal up to the speedo, which gives you the speed of the bike. Okay, so far so good, except, as usual, it's not so simple. And that's because the sender here is too big to fit in the small gap between the inside of the fork leg and the disc bolts. There just isn't room at all, I'm afraid. Not even a millimeter. So, unfortunately, this sender cannot be mounted to the inside of this fork leg. And partly that's because, of course, I'm using a non-standard wheel. This wheel is from a Yamaha R6, and the forks are from a Kawasaki ZRX 1200. So, we do expect to have these kind of problems when you're mixing and matching various parts on your bike. However, all is not lost because we also have a disc here on the back wheel, of course, and that's got lots of room around it. So maybe I could find a way to fix this speed sender close to the rear disc. Still all works. And the good news is that the wire it's attached to is really long, so it can go all the way from here back to the speedo, no problem. So now I've just got to work out a way of mounting it. I don't want to take this off and drill it and tap it. I'd ideally just use what I've got. So I've got some recessed holes here. I could maybe put a bracket from here that comes down. That's a possibility, but it'd be quite visible. I don't like that idea. The best idea I think I can come up with is to use this bolt here, which is threaded. I could fit a longer bolt, put it all the way through. I've got enough room for a nut behind there and then bolt a small bracket from that to this thing, which will then be hidden away behind here and doing its job. And then the wire, the cable can go along the inside perhaps of the swing arm, or more likely it can go up and follow the route of the rear brake line, which I've not got yet because I've not yet got my rear sets. They're still on order. And so to make it easier to mark, I've just put some marker pen on this plate and also I fitted a slightly longer socket head on here. So hopefully now that will go on there like that. And I've just got to hold it steady, hopefully roughly in the middle. Get my scribe here and mark where the edges are without moving anything. There we go. Right, so with that done, I've now got the shape of this bracket. I can now cut that out, shape it some more, and hopefully, when it's bolted on the back of here, you won't even know it's there. And so as you can see, I'm still quite a long way off my etch line. Not a problem because I've got my file here and because it's aluminium, it doesn't take much work to remove the material. So I'll come back when I've done that. And so there's the bracket roughly shaped. I'm sure it'll need more work yet, but let's go and see how it looks on the bike. And so, and so now I've just got to mark this plate carefully at the height to which this sender needs to be right there, right there. So it's in line with the disc bolt. And so with the bracket marked where this sender needs to be to align with the disc bolts, I've now got to arrange to fit this sender to my new bracket. And according to the instructions here, what it uses is just two zip ties. And that's why it's got this strange metal bracket bolted to it. I'll just uh, show you a photograph of that now. And what happens is the two zip ties go lengthways across there like that. It's two of them. And then in theory, they go around the fork leg. Obviously I don't have a fork leg. And my concern is that the zip ties <laughs> won't be very secure on this little bracket. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to file two or four little indents on each edge of this bracket to hold 
the zip tie securely in place where it needs to be. And so it's an hour or two later and I've painted this bracket. I've attached the sender to the bracket with these two zip ties and it doesn't work. The zip ties do not keep this thing nice and secure. It can move around. I've tried it with smaller zip ties thinking that might be the problem. But that doesn't work either. So I'm afraid using a plate like this with these zip ties just doesn't work which I kind of half expected because obviously it's made to, these zip ties are made to go around a nice uh, fat fork leg, not a very thin plate. And I did think, and so oh. here we have the Mark 1 version, which is made from three millimeter alloy plate. That didn't work. So now I've made another one, this time in eight millimeter plate, and hopefully that will work. So I've drilled it, tapped it, and now it's bolted, the little sender is bolted to this plate. All good, all good. So that will now fit inside there and all is well except except still a couple more things I want to do with this bracket to make it a bit better the first one is when it's on the bike it looks a bit of an eyesore it doesn't look very good so what I'm going to do is slim it down here so you can't see it so much and then what I think I'll do is I'll eventually get this thing on Jeff's Miller and it can mill down two-thirds of it down to about two or three millimeters like this so it's less visible on the bike so that's the thing I want to do the other problem I've got with it is that it's only got this one little screw bolt holding it in, in position and that allows it to move like that swivels around I can't really do it much tighter because this is plastic I don't want to sort of damage it so what I'm going to do is file a groove in the top of this where the sender sits just to sit it down by about a millimeter to stop it from moving around stop it from uh, pivoting around so I can do that myself it's not really a problem and so now I've cut down this bracket to a simple oblong shape hopefully you can't see it when it's on the bike and now I'm cutting this little groove where the sender sits to hopefully stop it from pivoting around so it sits like that almost done just got a little bit more work to do yet just to uh, sink it down a wee bit more make sure it's nice and secure I'm doing that very slowly with this flat little file which is taking forever so uh, come back when I finished and now yet another test fit on the bike got the sender in place there's the wiring to go forward to the speedo and yeah it looks okay so I'll bring the camera around you can see what's going on behind this bracket and so there's a bracket held in place by the bolt holding on the torque arm and there's a sender beautifully in line with the dismounting bolts and I think I've got a clearance there of about ooh, three millimeters or so which is about right I think I can always space it out if need be so it's not quite finished yet as I say because it still needs to be machined down a bit on this side and then painted black and hopefully when that's all done you won't even know it's there but that will have to wait for another day and so as you can see it's those small details that can take up an awful lot of time I'm not sure how many hours I've got so far in making that little bracket to hold the speedo sensor in place but it's certainly more than two or three hours but then again I'm not very quick at making such things and so with this video getting quite long I think we'll uh, end it here so thanks for watching and cheers